Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited to share with you eight perfumes that I think smell extremely luxurious and expensive. So if you are looking for a perfume that makes you feel and smell rich and opulent and luxurious and expensive then I think these are some great ones to check out. And before we start in today's video I do want to let you know as well this video is in partnership with Twisted Lily. They have graciously gifted me one of the perfumes that are in today's video. So if you're interested in that perfume or any other new fragrance or some of the other perfumes we're talking about today you can get them from Twisted Lily and I do have a discount code for you as well so you can save 10% on Twisted Lily with the code Alithia10 I will have a link and all of the information down in the description box below so thank you so much to Twisted Lily for partnering with me in today's video and sending me one of these beautiful perfumes to share with you and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk mostly about perfumes so if that is your thing please make sure to head on down and subscribe. Also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram as well where I do share a lot of behind the scenes footage, outfits of the day, scents of the day, and whatever else I feel like sharing. So without further ado, let's get started in today's video. Okay guys, so before we get into my true list, I'm going to give you an honorable mention and the honorable mention is Tabit from Tiziana Terenzi. So this perfume, you guys, I've talked to you about it before. I've talked to you about a few Tiziana Terenzi before and the reason that this is just an honorable mention and not on my true list of perfumes that I love that make me feel luxurious, glamorous, and expensive is because there is something about the Tiziana Terenzi perfumes that I don't know if I can do. A lot of them smell incredible, including this one. They smell very expensive. They smell very luxe, very rich. If you smell this on somebody, you will assume they have a lot of dollars in their bank account. When I was on vacation, you guys, I actually think I smelt either this one or some of the other Tiziana fragrances on a couple of different people. When someone walked by me wearing this, let me tell you, I picked it up on them, I noticed it, I did a double take, I looked up, I tried to figure out where the smell was coming from. This is a fragrance that projects. It is an incredible fragrance, and like I've told you in other videos, this is probably the most expensive smelling perfume I have in my collection. The issue that I have with Tabit is that it does give me a terrible headache. It is a very, very strong perfume. Now, I am prone to headaches, and I know there's a lot of people out there who really like this perfume, and it doesn't give them a headache, so this is completely subjective, but for that reason, that's why this is only an honorable mention. It is a great perfume, but it's not great for me, if you know what I mean. So I can still recommend this to people, and I think if you're looking for a really expensive perfume, I think you can pretty much go with any of the Tiziana Terenzis. I've had the chance to smell smell quite a few of them. I've smelled probably about eight or nine of them so far, maybe 10, and they all kind of have this very distinctive underlying Tiziana Terenzi DNA. They all have this kind of underlying quality to them. It's a little bit soapy. It's a little bit, in my opinion, a tiny bit screechy. I'm not really sure what that underlying quality is, but I can only be honest with you guys, and whatever it is, it doesn't really work for me. So I do want to give you a look at the lid. These bottles are incredible, you guys. I mean, everything about this bottle screams expensive, and I'm not ready to give up on this perfume quite yet because I wish it worked for me. I want it to work for me, but I... If I have to force something, then, you know, um, I don't want to force anything. If it's not working for me, it's not working for me. But this perfume, I really wish it would work for me. It just smells so incredibly expensive and luxe and high-end and the perfume oil concentration is crazy. It lasts forever, it projects. In the opening you have bergamot and green notes, in the middle you have peach, floral notes, sand and coconut, and in the base you have musk, cotton candy, vanilla, woody notes, and amber. So judging by those notes, you guys, this sounds like it would be a dream for me. I love the idea of sand and coconut and floral notes in a perfume. I thought this was going to smell very beachy, very tropical. I love the idea of cotton, can cotton candy, vanilla, woody notes, and amber in the base. This perfume should be a dream for me, but what makes it not a dream for me is, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I feel like this would be such a compliment monster. I feel like this would be such an incredible perfume. It's one of those perfumes that I feel like I should have in my collection and I feel like I should keep it, but somewhere deep down in my gut, I know that it's probably not right for me. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There is something in here that just immediately rubs my head the wrong way and gives me a headache. I wish it wasn't there, but it is. 
um, comment down below if you've had a similar situation with the Tiziana Terenzi perfumes. So anyway, I'm curious to know your guys' thoughts, but this is my first honorable mention, or my only honorable mention, Tabit from Tiziana Terenzi. Okay, you guys, and starting off my actual list of perfumes that make me feel incredible, expensive, and luxurious, we have Bond 9 Greenwich Village. And you guys, there is something about this perfume. It doesn't seem to matter who I ask, whether it is a family member, a friend, my boyfriend, everybody says the same thing. They say that it smells like a woman who has a lot of money. So there is something about this perfume, you guys, that just smells so luxe and so sophisticated, and I absolutely love it. The notes that are in here are lychee, cassis, and mandarin orange. In the middle, you have peony, water lily, and jasmine. And in the base, you have ambroxan, praline, musk, vanilla, and oak moss. And what it smells like, it's actually kind of hard to describe. It's kind of along the same lines as Baccarat Rouge 540. When you first spray it, it does have a similar vibe to it. Not that they smell the same. They are very different perfumes, but it does have that kind of air about it. It's kind of hard to distinguish what the notes are. It's a little sweet. It's a little bit earthy. It's got a little bit of a fruitiness to it. It almost has a gourmand touch to it. It's got a floral quality. It is just a perfectly blended masterpiece of a perfume and it just smells like money, plain and simple. The bottle is really incredible as well. And this is an example of a perfume that is very unique, very well blended, um, very high quality, but doesn't give me a headache. It's one of those perfumes that when I compare this to Tabit, this one for me doesn't have that kind of screechy, quality about it. This one just smells really luxurious and really rich and I absolutely love it. So if I'm being fair you guys, I haven't actually worn this really like given it a proper wear since I've purchased it. I have only sprayed it in the air, sprayed it on my skin once in a while and come up to the bottle and smelt it. It's a perfume that I think it just smells so expensive and I wish I had an office job. I wish I had somewhere to go every single day where I would be in public around people because I think this would become a very very frequently worn fragrance. I think this would be a great signature scent. This would be a great everyday wear to the office scent. It definitely does smell expensive. So I do have to give this perfume a little bit more attention. It's one that unfortunately hasn't been getting a lot of attention in my collection and I really do need to give it more attention because it is an incredible fragrance. So this is Greenwich Village from Bond 9. And you guys, since I briefly mentioned Baccarat Rouge, why don't we go ahead and talk about Baccarat Rouge really quickly. I know it's very cliche. People are are tired of hearing about it but you guys I can't make a perfume video about luxurious smelling perfumes without mentioning Baccarat Rouge because this truly is one of the or the most expensive luxurious smelling perfume in my entire collection and if you guys watched my recent video about my vacation perfumes the ones that I brought on vacay the ones I purchased on vacay I talked about in that video how I wished I would have brought Baccarat Rouge with me on vacation because this perfume I am telling you I picked it up on so many people when I was on vacation and this is a perfume that just fills a hallway, leaves a trail, smells incredible. All the people who walked past me or who I picked this up on, they just smell amazing. They smell amazing. Like I did not have a full appreciation for the power of this perfume until I smelt it on other people. Wearing it yourself is one thing, but this is a perfume that kind of um, tends to disappear a little bit and then it pops up again and some people become very anosmic to it. I'm not sure what the reasoning for that is with this particular perfume. I have other perfumes that doesn't happen with, but it does happen with this one. Um, but sometimes I don't even, I can't even tell I'm wearing it, but this is still a perfume that smells so rich and so incredible. and. I'm just, when I pick this up on other people, you guys, it just solidified for me how much I really, really love this perfume and how expensive it really does smell. So the notes that you have in here are saffron and jasmine in the opening. In the middle, you have amberwood and ambergris. And in the base, you have fir resin and cedar. This is, again, another one of those perfumes that is so well blended that you're not gonna look at the notes and be able to tell what it smells like. This perfume just smells sweet. It smells a little bit earthy, very natural, very airy, very luminous. I always tell people this has a very luminous, glistening kind of a quality to it. It just smells really expensive. Expensive, sweet, a lot of people say, um, that this kind of smells like cotton candy. I don't know if I would describe it as a cotton candy, but I do tell people that if you can imagine a natural cotton candy growing out of a stream in a forest, 
that might be what this is. It has a very natural, airy quality to it, and it's just an incredible, incredible fragrance. And I have decided that I am going to start wearing this as either a signature scent, one of my signature scents, or whatever. I'm going to be wearing this more often because, like I say, I've experienced it firsthand on how it actually smells on people when they do wear it. And let me tell you, you just smell amazing. So, okay, you guys, and the next perfume that smells expensive and luxurious is Santal Complet from Fragrance Dubois. Now, you guys, this is a new one to my collection. If you've been watching my channel, you probably recognize that I have not had this perfume before. This was generously gifted to me from Fragrance Dubois, so thank you so much to them for sending me this perfume. This was the one that I chose personally for myself when they asked which one I was most interested in. I had tried a few of theirs before, not a ton of them, but I tried a few, and this was the one that really stood out to me. So you guys, this perfume is a kind of a powdery, creamy, sweet, vanillic coconut fragrance. It's also a woody fragrance. There's some amber in here. There's a little bit of coconut in the opening. There's a little bit of musk in the base. There's a lot of vanilla. There's a lot of sandalwood. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like almost every perfume that has sandalwood or cardamom or fig or a combination of the three smells expensive. I don't know if that's just me, but I think every perfume in my collection that has cardamom, fig, or sandalwood or a combination of those three just smells incredible. And this is a strong sandalwood fragrance. And you guys, sandalwood is kind of a funny note for me because sometimes I love it, sometimes I hate it. There's times that I pick up my bottle of Gris Charnel, for example, and I think, oh no, it's too creamy, it's too woody, it's too masculine, and there's other times I pick it up and I cannot get enough. So sandalwood is kind of a funny note and it actually plays tricks with my nose, but you guys, in here it just works so well. This is a unisex perfume, of course. I think most of the perfumes from Fragrance Dubois are unisex. However, anyone can wear this and I do think it leans a little bit more feminine because it is a little bit sweet. It does have that coconut, has a little bit of violet, it has a lot of vanilla, and it does have a very sweet, rich component to it. So let me just take the lid off and smell it again for you. So you guys, the Fragrance Dubois bottles are absolutely stunning. Weighted cap, beautiful presentation. I just it feels like you're opening gold when you open a Fragrance Dubois perfume, honestly. They're just so luxurious, and they are a little bit expensive, you guys, but I do think that they are worth the price, especially if you are someone who is really into perfumes, or if you want a very small, well-curated collection, you want to smell unique, you don't want to smell like everybody else, I think Fragrance Dubois is definitely worth checking out. And you guys, there's something in here that is just so special and so beautiful. I think it's the combination of the coconut with the sandalwood. There's something in here that's sweet, bright, a little bit beachy, but at the same time, you could wear this in the evening. I think this is actually one of the perfumes from Fragrance Dubois that you could get away with year round. It would be a great fall perfume. It would be a great evening perfume. It would be great in the summertime. You could wear this on vacation. You could wear this as a signature scent. And what I love about this fragrance is once it's on your skin for a little while, the the dry down becomes a little sweet. It doesn't, it's not like a heavy, woody, um, masculine sandalwood like other perfumes are. And I actually have one other one in this list that is a lot more masculine, but this one is more of a feminine sandalwood. And I think this was smell great on a guy, but I definitely think this is a feminine leaning perfume and just an absolutely stunning fragrance. I think this would get you compliments. Just a beautiful, beautiful perfume. So I love this. Thank you again so much to Fragrance Dubois for sending this to me. And definitely check out Santal Complet if you have been hemming and hawing about Fragrance Dubois. This is one to check out for sure. So next on my list is Gris Charnel from BDK. So I did mention that I had a more masculine sandalwood perfume in this list, and this is that perfume. So you guys, this is definitely a unisex perfume and some people think it's very feminine, some people think it leans masculine. Personally, I do think it leans a little masculine. However, there is something about this perfume, you guys, that I can't get enough of. It's so unique, it's so gorgeous. Again, this does have cardamom, fig, and sandalwood. It's got that unbeatable combination. There's just something about those notes, you guys. They're creamy, they're a little spicy, they're a little sweet. There's just something about them that is an incredible combination. So this fragrance has cardamom, fig, and black tea. It also has iris, bourbon vetiver, and sandalwood, and it also has tonka bean. And this perfume is just rich, 
decadent, sensual, warm, inviting, enveloping, cozy, expensive, luxurious. I mean, this perfume is everything. I love this perfume. I have heard of a lot of women actually wearing this perfume for dates, and they say that it drives their partners crazy. Um, I have not tried wearing this for a date. I have let my partner smell it, and he says he likes it better for a guy. Anyway, this is one that's a little bit newer to my collection. I haven't really had a chance to experiment with it a whole lot. All I know is that when I get it on my skin, I can't stop smelling it. Again, the BDK bottles do not disappoint. It has a nice big weighted cap. Bottles themselves are really beautiful and really unique. You get sandalwood, you get powdery, you get a little sweetness, you get just a tiny touch of a vanillic and kind of a tonka bean component. I think it's that tonka bean and that iris in there that make it okay for um, a woman to wear that make it a little bit more feminine. Um, but yeah, overall, I do think it is a bit of a masculine perfume, but you guys, I don't know. There's something about it that gives me straw handbag vibes. I don't know why, but when I smell this, I feel like I could wear this on a beach with a straw handbag. I don't know why I'm thinking white linen sundress. I'm thinking straw handbag. It just makes me feel rich and luxurious and expensive and it's it's also a great bedtime scent. I have worn this to bed, which sounds a little crazy, but it's a very comforting, cozy um, perfume that you really like to smell when you're getting cozy. It would be a great cuddling scent. Um, it's just a great cozy scent and I really, really like it. So Grease Charnel from BDK, definitely one of the most luxurious in my collection. Okay, you guys, and this next perfume is also new to my collection, so you won't have seen this in any other videos. This perfume was generously gifted to me from Twisted Lily, who I have worked with in the past. And you guys, I do have a coupon code for you. So if you are interested in this perfume or any other niche fragrances, Twisted Lily does have a really huge selection. They're an amazing website and I do have a 10% off discount code for you and it is Alithia 10. This perfume I have wanted for such a long time and it's kind of a weird thing because this was actually a blind choice. They offered for me to choose a perfume. This was a blind choice and there was something about this perfume. I've seen reviews. I've read up on the notes and do you ever just get a feeling in your gut that a perfume is going to work for you? You just get a feeling that it's going to be great for you. I have had that feeling about this perfume for months. I have wanted this for months. So thank you so much to Twisted Lily for partnering with me in today's video and for sending me this perfume. 51 from Roja. I don't even know where to begin. This is one of those perfumes that again is so well blended that it's hard to pick out individual notes. It's hard to say, is it a sweet fragrance? Is it floral? Is it gourmand? Is it fresh? Is it woody? Is it vanilla? There's so much going on in here but it is so beautiful. So first of all, I want to give you a little view of the bottle. I wasn't going to do that with every bottle, but you guys, this bottle truly does deserve extra attention. This is just such a stunning bottle, and this is the first fragrance from the Essence Pour Femme line that has really worked for me and really spoke to me that I am in love with. You guys, I just, I love this perfume. This was a love at first sniff. This is expensive. This smells, smells expensive. It smells luxurious. It smells a little bit mysterious. It it has a sexiness to it. It has a sensuality to it. It has a classiness to it. So there are a ton of notes in this perfume. It opens with bergamot. In the middle, you have raspberry, gardenia, orange blossom, tuberose, ylang ylang, lily, lily of the valley, jasmine, and may rose. So a ton of floral notes. And in the base, you have vanilla, cashmere wood, benzoin, sandalwood, orris, vanilla, anise, patchouli, cinnamon, and clove. This perfume is just incredible, you guys. It's hard to describe. It's hard to explain. It just smells good. I'm going to take the cap off and actually spray it on my skin because I want to experience it 100% for you guys and tell you kind of what I pick up. So as with all of these fragrances I'm sharing with you today, super luxurious, super high-end, absolutely gorgeous presentation, nice big weighted cap. Um, the purple color of the bottle just looks very regal and very expensive, very luxe. It is so, there is something about this, you guys. Oh, okay, I'm gonna spray it on my skin, but there's something about this. Again, when I compare it to something like Tabit, this has the same luxury, high-end feel as Tabit, 100%. If you smell this on a person, I think that you would think they smell very rich, very expensive, very luxurious, um, very classy, but there's nothing screechy in here. There's nothing synthetic smelling. There's nothing soapy. There's nothing harsh. There's nothing that would give you a headache. It just smells smooth, well-blended, 
beautiful. It's a beautiful perfume. Let me put it on my skin. Did you guys hear the atomizer on that? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna spray it for you again. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I can pick it up on the air. Oh, okay. Okay, so initially, oh my gosh, you guys, there's something about this. When you first spray it, oh, I don't even know how to describe it. This is so hard, okay. When you first spray it, it's sweet, it's floral. A little bit spicy. They said there's cinnamon and clove in there, but it's not like it comes out like super strong. It's not like a kitchen counter, you know, cinnamon or clove. It's a very smooth, sweet, floral, um, almost a fruity spiciness that's in there. I, I'm honestly just at a loss for words. It, it smells warm and vanillic and ambery and smooth. The floral notes, uh, I, you guys, I honestly, I don't even know how to tell you how this smells. It is so well blended. It is such a masterpiece. It is so beautiful. And at the same time, it has an everyday wearable sense about it. You could wear this every single day. You could wear this on a date. You could wear this on a special occasion. Very feminine. I love it. Um, this one has quickly jumped up to the top of my list, you guys. From the moment I had it, I just, I'm so happy to have it. And it has quickly jumped up to the top of my list. I have to say, I like this better than Greenwich Village. I like this better than. Gris Charnel, I have to say. Um, this is right up there for me with some of my favorite, favorite perfumes. So again, if you are interested in 51 from Raja or any other niche fragrances, I will have Twisted Lily's information in the description box. And you guys, this one is definitely worth checking out. Um, I honestly, I can't imagine somebody not liking it. So we'll put it that way. I don't ever recommend blind buying, but I like blind buying myself. And if you like blind buying too, I honestly cannot picture somebody not liking this perfume it just smells it, it smells like everything it smells really really good okay that's about the best way i can put it so that is 51 from raja parfums okay you guys so second on my list is santal blanc from van cleef and arpels and this is actually a perfume i bought when i was on vacation so this is a newer one to my collection as well i fell in love with this perfume you guys i love van cleef and arpels fragrances when i was down on vacation i did have an opportunity to smell about six of them and this one really stood out to me so the name actually translates to white sandalwood and you guys that could not be a more perfect name for this perfume if you watched my Vegas perfume collection video, um, I did mention that this perfume smells white to me. And by that, I mean it smells like the bottle looks. It smells like a bright summer day. It smells like a white linen sundress. It smells luxurious, rich, fresh, but also creamy and a little sweet. It is just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It makes me feel like I smell very rich. <laughs> I wore this on a couple of days on vacation and it just suited the occasion so perfectly because I was at a a beautiful luxury place. I was eating at luxurious restaurants. I was sitting beside a beautiful poolside and you know, it just, everything about this perfume suited my vacation so perfectly and it is a must sniff. So again, you have those two special notes that make a perfume smell rich and that is fig and sandalwood. So apparently I have a thing for sandalwood. I didn't think I did, but apparently I do. So in the opening you have fig nectar and mandarin orange. In the middle you have sandalwood and violet and in the base you have musk tonka bean and benzoin so what makes this a little bit sweet i think that there's that fig nectar and that mandarin orange it almost has a coconutty sense to it however comparing it to something like santal complet this is not nearly as coconutty santal complet is truly your coconut sandalwood this is more of a figgy creamy um summertime benzoin musk sandalwood it's just beautiful you guys i'm going to take the lid off again so again with van cleef and arpels you do have a nice weighted cap i love the van cleef and arpels bottles they are so classy um just as a side note another perfume i really like from them was the bois de amand and also the ombre imperial both of those stunning gorgeous like uh also smell expensive like you could probably go with any of them to be honest but this one was the one that really stood out to me. I hemmed and I hawed for a really long time and this is the one that I was just like hands down I love it I'm getting it. 
oh, there's something so good about it, you guys. You know how when I used to have Bois Dore, I described that one as having a cold metallic feel because it, it actually did have a metallic note in there. This almost smells like it has that same metallic note. It has a bit of a cold, um, just kind of like a cool metallic vibe. I don't know how to describe it, but it's creamy, it's sweet. It just smells so darn good, you guys, so darn good. And I was actually really surprised when I look at the notes and saw the notes that are in here. I would not have guessed that that was what was in here. Honestly, this is a perfume that, again, is difficult to tell what's really in it. I mean, I think you can tell there's sandalwood and probably fig nectar, but it just smells like a new creation. It smells like they took the notes and created something completely different. They created a feeling, they created a place, they created a time. It's just a stunning, stunning, stunning perfume. Obviously you can tell what some of my favorites are, but when I'm done the video, I'll go through and tell you what my top, top favorites are. So this is definitely um, one of them. I'm also very happy that I picked this up without being influenced. I'm really happy that this was a non-biased, I had never heard about it. I just went and smelt it, fell in love with it. That makes it really special rather than going to smell something that everyone has told you about. I think there's something very special about picking out a perfume for yourself that you've never heard about. So yeah, I love this on many, many levels. So this is Santal Blanc from Van Cleef & Arpels. And the last perfume on today's list, comment below if you guys already guessed I would have this on here. This is Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge. And I've already taken the lid off because the lid is extremely heavy. This whole bottle is very, very heavy. The entire presentation of this perfume is just exorbitant and very luxe and the fragrance inside is no disappointment compared to the presentation. It is just so beautiful. Again, you have one of those magical, luxurious ingredients. You have cardamom in here. You also have iris and vanilla. So this is one of the most feminine perfumes that I'm mentioning today. Oh my goodness, you guys, I can't even I can't even begin to tell you how much I love this perfume. So this was actually one of my vacation scents. I did wear this on vacation and it was perfect. It just made me feel rich. It made me feel expensive. It made me feel like I fit in at this luxurious place. Good lasting power, very sexy. Um, I don't know, it's just a great perfume. This is one that I think is a little too sensual for daytime. However, I did wear it during the day and it was okay. I think you can wear this the same occasions you would wear Baccarat Rouge. If you feel comfortable wearing Baccarat Rouge, you can probably wear Luby Rouge. So the cap is incredible, it has this little shape of the world, and then it has a shoe on top with the little red bottom, which I love. Oh my, you guys, I, I can't, I just, I'll just stop, I'll just stop, because you know, you know how I feel about this one. This one is a must smell. Um, that cardamom in there gives it a little bit of a woodiness. There is this feminine vanilla. There's a soft powderiness. It's just heaven. It's so good. I love it. So this is definitely one of my top, top favorite. This is one of my best purchases of all time. This was a blind purchase for me and it was worth every penny. You want to smell expensive and good and sexy and feminine. This is the one you need and you wear it with your high heels, your so Kates, whatever you want to wear. You wear it and you go out in a nice red cocktail dress and you slay. <laughs> so Christian Louboutin Luby Rouge, amazing. Okay guys, so let me give you a quick recap of these perfumes here. Which ones are my favorite? Which ones are most feminine, masculine, etc. So Greenwich Village I think definitely is a more feminine perfume. It's very fresh beautiful, kind of a sweet perfume, and smells very expensive, difficult to tell what's in it because it's just so well blended. Unfortunately for me, I don't give that one a lot of attention, and I don't know why that is. There's just, I just don't reach for it a lot. That's my personal, if I'm being honest, I think it's incredible. I just don't know why I don't reach for it very much. We have Tabit, which is again, um, don't worry, I can pick it up because it's a really strong lid. Tabit is undoubtedly one of the most expensive perfumes I have and one of the most expensive smelling, but again, I find it a little almost synthetic-y, screechy, soapy. There's something in here that bothers me and I don't know what it is. Um, and this one I would say is unisex. I think women and men equally, but to me, I do feel like I'd rather smell it on a man. That's just my personal 
my personal opinion with that one. Grease Charnel, of course you have that fig, that sandalwood, and that cardamom mixed together. It is a more masculine perfume, but super sensual, addictive, something about it I really, really like. I kind of go back and forth with it because some days I feel like it's too masculine, other days I feel like it's perfect for me. And I think it's an all season, all the time perfume. Then we get into probably what are my more favorite, favorite ones that I actually really enjoy wearing. And we have Santal Complet from Fragrance Dubois, which is just this super rich, luxurious smelling coconut sandalwood. I think unisex, but I think it does lean a little bit feminine. And then we have my top four favorite, you guys. My top four favorite from this whole thing. We have 51 from Roja, which is a new love. Absolutely incredible. Floral, sweet, amber, vanilla, a little spicy. It's just incredible. Can't even describe it. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It is a true gem. And then we have Baccarat Rouge, which I don't think I've ever smelled anyone smell so darn good as when I've smelled someone wear Baccarat Rouge. Just a no-brainer and I really need to start wearing it a little bit more often. Then we have my Santel Blanc, which is this kind of cold, creamy, rich, bright, smells like a bright white day at a beautiful, rich, luxurious place and you're wearing a white linen sundress and you just smell like money. And then we have Luby Rouge, which is probably one of the sexiest perfumes and one of my best purchases of all time. So you guys, the most feminine, yeah, those are the most expensive, luxurious, 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 rich smelling perfumes in my collection. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these beautiful perfumes. So you guys, that's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes. Please let me know down below what would be your top favorite rich smelling perfume or do you share some of the same tastes as I do? I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are and I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.